Ooh. Sorry, dude. Right. Stay out of the way. Hello everybody and welcome back to Q&A Wednesdays. After a little bit of a break, we have returned. Um, we realized that it's a good thing that we do these. People really appreciate the time we take to answer your questions. So, um, well, just a bit of a background. If you've not seen these before, basically we um, take questions from our Patreon supporters and we then answer them online uh, for you, basically. If you're not a Patreon supporter, you can click down on the link in the description to become a Patreon supporter where you will receive such perks as exclusive footage, behind the scenes footage, um, merch discounts, and one-on-one -on -one advice when it comes to your conversion as well. And being a Patreon supporter starts from just one pound a month. Goes all the way up to 12 pound a month for VIP access, but one pound a month it starts from and you can get loads of stuff, including, um, video that we've just put up or we're going to put up in the next day or so uh, in fact no it's up on youtube already so exclusive content just for patrons you get the code and the link when you are a patron supporter so let's get straight into it then we have um one two three questions from our patron supporters and we have three questions from instagram what we also do is put out our q a release on patreon sorry, on social media, and if we get any decent questions that we think will be valuable to you, we will answer them as well. But, Ali, stop it there. Before we go any further, I'm just gonna lock that sliding door down because it's a bit noisy and rattly in the background. It's getting a bit windy. Question number one is from Philip Holloway. Philip Holloway, thanks for your support and thanks for your question. Morning, I am just about to install a maxi fan on a Ford Custom roof. That'll be a Transit Custom. Uh, so it doesn't have any ridges and it's perfectly flat. I have bought the Mastic W4 strip to put underneath the main part and I was going to use screws that have washers on them to screw to the roof that you use on metal sheet roofs. My question is, can I put a nice bead of sealant around the edge so it looks tidy or do I have to ice it like a cake like all the people on YouTube seem to do? Philip. Um, right, so I've not personally fitted a maxi fan. However, I've installed a lot of the skylight type windows, such as the Fiamma crystal and that sort of thing. And yes, when it comes to fitting um, a flat appliance, such as a window or a vent onto a roof that will have ridges, yes, you have to fill in that gap. Um, one such van we did recently was a skylight on a full height transit van and I think it was a Mark 7 Transit. And yes, it did have the ridges, and yes, you have to fill in those gaps. Mastic W4 strip, I would recommend before you even start, get a second pack of the Mastic W4 strip because you will probably need more than you think. So it's always handy to have a bit too more, too mo it's always good to have too much and too little. So before you cut any holes, buy another uh, Mastic W4 uh, pack, put that in. Um, I would recommend not to use sheet metal screw, uh, you know, the metal sheet roof screws with the washers around them. They can be used. However, if you apply sealant correctly, and um, quite a lot of it as well, um, then normal pan head screws that normally come with the kit should suffice. To fill in the gaps with sealant, don't go mad at it like icing on a cake. However, um, use it effectively and yes, neaten up all the edges. So Mastic W4, uh, filling strip in the dips and troughs of the roof and then seal all around the edges with a sealant such as a Sikaflex or a Tiger Seal or a Caravan window sealant, something like that. Um, but do your research first in terms of which sealant, but we would normally use a Sikaflex type sealant for a roof vent or skylight window. I hope that helps, let us know. Uh, Richard Davies is question number two. Thank you, Richard, for your support and your question. Hi guys, I just took ownership of my T6 yesterday. Congratulations. It's always exciting getting a new car. Uh, would you be able to film the running slash routing of an electrical kit like that supplied by Rain Automotive? I'd really love to understand the common routing methods when fitting into a van with a full set length side with a, with a 
full set of sorry with a set of full length side units wardrobes etc i'm a conversion virgin and for me the cable routing seems to be the one thing that requires careful planning you can't fit final carpeted ply panels and then you need to access to run wires for example so richard when it comes to routing and wiring um you've seen you've potentially seen the video where we've installed the split charge kit into a t5 so that routing's fairly simple uh, from there i understand yes you want to find out where to route it is possible uh, to route the cabling from that driver's seat up the b pillar behind the plastic trim that surrounds the actual b pillar on a t5 from there, you can either have access into the middle side panel below the sliding window or the, the window in the long middle panel behind the driver's door, or you can actually route it all the way up the B pillar along the top of the roof and then down to wherever you need to. So for example, the LED lighting or any of the lighting or switching that is up in the roof, you would run your wires up that B pillar nice and safely. Again, we have a how to safely route wiring video um, I'll leave a link below or up in the top corner up here um, for you to follow that as well. In terms of careful planning, yes, it does take careful planning. When we convert a van, we generally do um, custom installations on vans. So we don't normally get a bolt-in interior, just throw it in. Every van we do is different, so the, the planning stage does take a while. And we would normally have an interior in, out, you know, numerous times even before the floor, floor is down or the carpeting's down or the side panels are down, just to get a really, really good idea of where that cable is to be routed. Um, so take your time, route it safely, either in conduit, um, and then keep it secured to the sides of the vehicle with the likes of P-clips and or pads with cable ties, or use existing cable routes that you already find within the vehicle. They are routed in those safe routes for a reason, because the um, factory or the designers have deemed it best to route the cable that way. So where you can, route the cabling in the same manner as the factory have done. So I hope that helps, Richard. Thanks again for your question. John Harkness, one of our followers and one of our merch perch, um, customers as well. Um, we've actually sent some merchandise to him out in Melbourne in Australia. So hello to everybody over, um, well, down under in Australia. Um, his question is, well, there's a series of questions, I think, or one question with quite a few possible answers. John Harkness says, quick question. I'm in Melbourne, Australia. Just wondering how much insulation and barriers are required. Is the insulation to stop one, the cold, two, the heat, three, condensation, or four, the sound, or a combination of all four? Keep up the great work, thanks. Now, again, we have done numerous videos on sound deadening and insulation, and again, you can find links to all of those videos below. Um, insulation, and I know I don't say it properly, so stop picking on me in the comments. Insulation and sound deadening is there, as you say, to do all four. Um, in the winter, it keeps the warmth inside the vehicle and the cold out. In the summer, it keeps the, cold, uh, the heat out of the vehicle, or it's meant to as best as possible. Um, in terms of condensation, that sometimes is deemed an open question. Um, and we have a blog answering all of those condensation questions. Again, I will put a link right here for that, do I need a vapor barrier in my van? So the, the link will be right here. Um, and for the sound. So we use uh, Dodo Mat products because we've used them on most, if not all of our vehicles. It's very effective stuff um, and it's very easy to apply. Um, for the likes of Melbourne, the environment and the climate is fairly similar to the UK. You will have a hotter summer, um, but in terms of cold winters and warmer summers, then fairly similar to the UK. Um, I would suggest for you guys, um, actually the whole three layers, if you can find it out in, the U in Australia, um, there is an equivalent um, sound deadening over in Australia and again I'll leave a link to those guys down below they've done a big good video um, on YouTube as well and I'll try and find that video and link you down so um, to answer your question it's a combination of all four um, 
the products do stop the condensation hitting the outer panels of the van. Um, they do stop the cold getting in and preserve the heat inside the vehicle and they also stop the van getting too hot in the summer. Um, and in terms of sound, yes, if you apply a self anything um, like a sound deadener, the self-adhesive sound deadener or the self-adhesive insulation, um, that will stop those panels resonating uh, more than they would do from the factory. So yes, it will reduce the sound as well. Ugh. Sound like I was waffling then, or I feel like I was waffling then, John, I do apologize, but hopefully that has answered your question. And thank you for your support again, and thanks for your question. Moving on to Instagram, Lisa and Aid, and they are uh, followers of ours as well. So hi guys, thank you very much for your question once again. Um, would you sound deaden the roof before fitting a thermal van liner, or will the van liner be okay on its own? Um, again, you've seen our videos, guys. Uh, we would suggest fitting a sound deadener to the roof. The roof panel is the single biggest panel in your vehicle that is not interrupted by the likes of a door opening or a window aperture. Um, and that is the panel that will uh, vibrate, resonate most on the whole vehicle. So anything you can put on that panel to reduce those vibrations is better than what the factory would have provided you. So to answer your question quickly, yes, I would sound deaden that roof uh, before any of the thermo van liner. Thanks again for your question, Lisa and Aid. Uh, second question from Instagram, Jessica Sarah Morgan. Thank you for your question. We have a Subaru Sambar. I think that's one of those tiny little Bedford Rascal size vans that sometimes have the split VW split screen front on them. I think it's something like that. They're kind of cool. Uh, we have a Subaru Sambar and the roof is very curved. How can we best bend the new headliner in? Um, I've never worked on a Subaru Sambar, um, but we have had to um, curve headliners in custom applications to um, fit them effectively and uh, permanently in some cases. So the way I would go about that first off is figuring out which way your ply panel likes to be bent most. Each wood has a grain. I know ply is sort of cross-grained when it's made, but it will have a way that it bends more one way than the other. So longitudinally or width ways, it will, I believe a ply panel bends easier width ways. So find out which way that panel bends best. And um, I'm no fully qualified carpenter by any stretch. However, when it comes to fitting headliners, we use um, the props uh, you've seen us use them in a couple of our videos now. Um, in fact, the headlining video that we've done, you, we have these blue, almost like acro props. Um, they're about five foot long, adjustable in height. And what we would do is hold the headliner up in place using those props. And once the curve has been made, um, then you can make your fixings or take your measurements to then attach that headliner up into the roof. I do hope that helps. Um, either that or use more people to help you put it into place. So more hands or those roof supports, uh, which are generally used for um, putting drywall or plasterboard up on ceilings in houses and things like that. Um, those props are available from Screwfix. Thank you for your question again, Jessica. Last question is from my wife. Uh, Dominica, she says, how do you prepare your camper for the winter season? That is actually a really good question. She's probably gonna get at me because our camper hasn't been on the road all year. Um, so the way I'm gonna prepare our camper for winter, sweetheart, is to leave it exactly where it is. Um, but don't take that advice, everybody. Um, I'm gonna give you two options. So how to prepare your, your camper van for the winter if it is parked up and how to, prepare, how to prepare your camper van for the winter if you're gonna be using it for the whole season. So if you're gonna park up your van for the winter, I would, first of all, if you can, find some dry storage for it. So if you can rent a unit, rent a garage, find a local friendly farmer who has some space in his barn or somebody with an industrial unit with a corner free that you can leave your camper in. Have a, talk, have a look around, have a talk to some people, even if it's for a short term, like three month period, if you can leave that vehicle in a dry um, storage over winter. Um, in terms of the camping equipment, I would drain your water fully, 
I would drain the, so the fresh and gray water, I would drain from the system completely because if that freezes over the winter period, it can expand and then start breaking things like your water joints, uh, your pipework, maybe even your tap or even the water tank if you have one. So make sure all that water is completely drained. Um, in terms of the electrical side of the camper, I would disconnect the leisure battery, maybe even take the leisure battery out completely and keep it inside throughout the winter so it doesn't have those varying hot and cold temperatures throughout the winter. Um, and make sure it's clean and dry as well. Take all the food out of the fridge, clean the fridge, leave the fridge door propped open, um, maybe even remove all the dry goods from your vehicle as well because our van was laid up for a couple of months um, everything, all the dry goods were fine, but there was one pack of sugar, a sachet of sugar. Um, the mice found it and we got mice in the camper van and they chew chewed holes through everything. So uh, make sure you, if you are leaving it in dry storage over the winter, take all the food and sweet things that you can out of it. And it's a good excuse to clean your van out before you store it up as well. Just take all the food out. Um, maybe have some dehumidifier uh, packs they almost look like socks with um, kitty litter in them um, and they will just absorb the moisture in the vehicle as well over the winter period. In terms of mechanicals, um, when you lay the vehicle up, if at all possible, lay it up on axle stands. If you're not moving it at all, lay it up on axle stands so you're not putting any pressure on those tires and the tires won't get any flat spots where it's been stood for a long period of time. So if you can, leave it up on axle stands with the tires and wheels just off the floor a little bit so you don't get any flat spots or the tires don't go flat over that period that you're storing it. Disconnect the battery as well. You don't want that battery draining. Again, maybe even take the battery out of the vehicle um, so you don't get that drained over the winter period. Um, I'm sure there's a hundred other things, um, but if you can't have, if you can't find a dry storage area, um, consider maybe putting a stand to up or one of these large gazebo style tents. That is an option on your driveway or if you're allowed. Failing that, um, you can purchase a breathable water cover for your uh, camper van from the likes of Heritage Park Centre or Just Campers or even Amazon. You can find some of these large breathable uh, covers that will keep your vehicle at least dry and free from extra dirt over the winter period. If you can't find any of those items to keep your van stored over winter, then make sure you give your vehicle a good wash and a good wax and a good polish to give that paintwork the best chance of staying nice and fresh over the winter period. And even take a look at one of our last videos. We used a really good protectant from Valet Pro and that will keep your paint beading for at least three months. Um, again, that is one of our patron exclusive videos and we will leave the link to our patron supporters page down below. If you are using, part two of that question, if you are using your vehicle all season, which I would recommend by the way, keeping it running, keeping it driving over the winter is the best thing you can do for your camper van over winter. Um, they don't like being held up. They don't like being held up for very long. So if you are using it all season, make sure your wheels are wearing the appropriate tires for colder climbs, such as all season tires or uh, better than that, winter tyres. I wear, or we put winter tyres on all of our cars over uh, the colder season and they are money in the bank. They're excellent having winter tyres. Because even if it snows for one day during the winter, you know it will be that one day that you need to get somewhere in a hurry and if you're wearing the wrong tyres, then uh, you may not get to that place. Um, put a higher concentration of uh, screen wash into the washer bottle so that doesn't freeze over winter and make sure your coolant and water ratio is correct so you don't have any coolant freezing over the winter also. And if you are planning on using it over the winter, maybe give it a quick service. You know, make sure everything's right. It's always good to service your vehicle at least once a year, um, but if you are gonna be using it in uh, more arduous conditions over the winter, make sure it's got, you know, maybe a fresh set of plugs or at least a fresh oil change and some filter changes as well. Wow. That was a lot of information. Thank you for holding on this long. Um, Domi, I hope that was the right question for you. Again, our camper van's not gonna have any of that prep because we are bringing it in and hopefully starting to build it this winter. So everybody keep an eye out for that. Thanks again um, for your support, everybody. Our patrons, thank you guys. You are the best. Uh, we really appreciate all your support month by month by month. 
Um, and that's about it. If you like these videos, please subscribe where you can see more of these every week, hopefully. We hope to give you more and more of these videos now. Um, we have caught up with all of our extra work. Um, if you like my hat, you can buy your own. Have a look at our website. I'll leave a link down below where we've got a full range of merch, including hats, t-shirts, hoodies, key rings, even masks we've put on there now as well. So once again, thank you very much, and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.